Here we go. So we are going to start right now the e-commerce Q&A. This is Phil Kiprianu again from the Shopify Strategy Group. And I've decided like um, this weekend that I'm going to do a monthly webinar only for Q&A. And I will have also other webinars uh, ongoing, but I want to make sure that I'm still giving you as much value as I can on a regular basis, even life, if I'm trying to answer all your questions, your posts, I'm seeing everything you post on the on the group. And I'm always trying to be there. And if I'm not answering, like, you know, this group is quite active. So um, we uh, someone will answer you if I don't. But um, so let's start right now. Since it's, it's already 2.02, uh, we're going to start with Mr. Ad Managerios. Uh, so um, does your, uh, I'm going to unmute you. Mr. Ad Manageros, uh, are you there? Yes, no, I can't hear you. Uh, if not, just please uh, post your question here so I will be able like to answer you right away. Uh, next, 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 next. Since I don't have any, any uh, feedback on him, I'm going to go to Bianca. Hi, Bianca, your productivity secret, what it is. Um, I will unmute you. Uh, hi, Bianca. Does your microphone is on? Hello, hello. I can't hear you, barely hear you. Uh, are you there? Yes, no, doesn't seem to work. Doesn't matter. I, my productivity secret, one part of my productivity secret is very simple. Um, I'm going to put here on the notes. I'm going to tell you one thing that I'm doing. I'm writing, writing my daily task, weekly one, monthly one, yearly one. So like that, since I'm doing that, I can break like a day by day uh, what I need to do. And I mean, if something I, I'm not able to do it today, I'm going to put that the other day. And I'm going to try uh, to do as much as I can in the end of the week. So I will close my weekly task and doing the same for monthly because there are few things that you cannot plan ahead. I mean, that you need to put at the end of the month. Uh, what I mean to uh, what I mean is you can do some things, but it, it's going to take like more than a day than a week to 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 be able to achieve it. But it's still very important that you put your goals there. Like if you're planning to start this new strategy where you're going to go and distribute your products on on a brick and mortar store. I mean, this is not something that you will be able to do it now. But if you have calls to do, I mean, you're going to put that at the top of your list. You need to do, let's say, five, five calls today, five calls after, you know. All this kind of stuff. So these are the kind of things that you will need to prepare in advance. You will put that in your monthly calendar and you will put goals also attached to that. So very important is to add up some goals attached to your task. This is one part of my productivity secret. Hope I've answered you that on that. Um, yeah, pretty cool to see you guys as well. <laughs> I know I can't see you right now, but um, I thought that uh, it was it would be a great idea. So you can see my face and you can put uh, some kind of uh, actions uh, right <laughs> into it since um, you can only see my very, very, very serious picture right now. Um, what I wanted now to go is to jump into the next question. So I have my friend here, Christian Lovridge, on mute. Christian, what's up? You're going to kill me, man. I'm in the middle of eating while I'm watching this. <laughs> <laughs> That's really amazing. <laughs> No problem. Uh, listen, I can I can go back to you a bit later if you have any questions or if you have anything right now. Uh, I'm just listening, man. Just go ahead. Just go ahead. Great. So if anything, like, uh, just put your hands up and I will come to you right after. <laughs> I will. Uh, bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> Grazie. Grazie. <laughs> uh, next, 
my friend Dimitris Tikanis. Dimitris. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Live from Greece. That's great. Uh, my friend, do you have any question for me? Yes, uh, I have one question. Actually, I would like to to tell us and uh, the rest of the guys uh, what is your uh, process daily from for knowing <clears throat> which orders come in, which orders come out. If you have any customer service problem, so do you have a, a specific time of the day that you do this kind of stuff, the customer support or? Uh, the communication with your team, mm -hmm. or it happens daily, hour after hour, so you take care of it uh, as long as it's as soon as it comes. Yeah, very, very, very good question. Uh, first of all, I have orders coming in like every day, every single hour. So um, I need I need to make sure that everything uh, works well. So first of all, I have a dashboard. Okay, I have a dashboard. Mm -hmm. uh, I use Scythe.com. Uh, where you can set up like um, all your live visitors, the numbers of orders you have, the numbers of sales, uh, your ad span, and also like the number of user also that you have. So this is the first thing that I'm using to monitor what's going on on my site because it happens like uh, sometime like you're gonna see like there's no ad span at all. So um, and if you're not watching what's going on. Uh, you can freak out because at the end of the day, you're not uh, eating your goals, your daily sales goals. So this is the first thing that I have. So I can monitor what's going on. The other thing that I have also, it's uh, on my team right now, we are only three. I mean, I have only three employees, two people on customer support. Uh, my customer support right now, I've made some change lately. Before, uh, it was uh, nine to five. But now I've changed that to 9 to 10 p.m., so 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Why? Because I want to cover as much as I can. Also, I found out that there was some sales uh, late in the night. Like There was like some kind of peak sales starting sales peak around like 7 p.m., okay? Um, and when you have someone lives on your customer support, um, you might be able to close more to close more sales uh, also because people are all always asking some questions about products like especially in jewelry like uh, uh, do I have the right sizing for this ring uh, all this kind of stuff even if it's on the website they need to know what's going on and like that also it reassured them that we are real people also behind that and we're not there like to take their money and run away so this is very important another thing also that I have in my customer support is a one eight hundred number. Numbers. Uh, the one eight hundred number. Also, my customer team uh, is able to answer that nine to ten. And if there is anything after, they can leave a message on the mailbox, and we will call them back to, uh, the next um, the next day. Also, I have uh, Elp Scout. Elp Scout is to manage uh, everything related to emails or chat that we missed. Okay, we're using for chat user like. And if we miss a chat or anything like that, the conversation will go directly to Help Scout, so we can do a follow up uh, with them. Now, to um, to clear out the the the, the question of uh, my system regarding how I communicate with them is I use Slack. Okay, Slack is a communication tool. Uh, where you can have different kind of channel where you can assign your user, your uh, your team members to this kind of channel. So let's say I have a channel called customer support. So everything related to customer support will go into it. Since now my uh, my team is growing, I'm gonna add like new people. I'm gonna have like different um, channel. Like one of my team is my full time designer. So everything that she does, she posts that right away. So I can. I can um, look at what's going on on the on the the, the feed on the news feed directly into um, uh, the message feed. Sorry, the message feed in, the, in the, into the Slack, so I can see like the pictures, what you're sending me, and I can tell right away if there's any changes to do or not. Okay, so this is what I'm using like for communication. Then after that. If there's any issues, because sometimes we're talking about issues in, in terms of customer support, is like, let's say you have uh, refunds, uh, exchanges, and uh, what else? 
um yeah i mean anything like defective like any anything like that uh i'm gonna have like for that uh google google sheet where inside they are going to put the date they are going to put uh customer name customer name uh order email and uh what what they want okay what they want it's so or what what the deal is you know what the deal is let's say so they want an exchange okay uh we're gonna process the exchange they want a gift card we're gonna we're gonna do the gift card uh they want a refund we're gonna do a refund so like that we're we're able like to see what is going on with each of these customer and once it's done i mean we just uh check it so like that we know that uh this task has been done um yeah that's that's pretty much it uh is there anything related to that that you want to know more uh dimitris no i am 110 percent covered <laughs> <laughs> great great more than I I, so that's great amazing so if there's anything else um i mean uh you can um you can post your question later uh, i will come back to you now, great, great. thank you, Nimitris. So now uh, we're going to move to Ed Bishop. Mr. Ed. Hello, Ed. Uh, where are you? <laughs> so, Ed, if you have any questions, just feel free to post it right away in the, um, in the question box, and we will go through that a bit later. I have Evan Kotler here. Evan. How are you, Evan? Evan doesn't have a mic, it seems. But Evan, same thing here. You can post your questions. I will be able to uh, answer it to you. What else? Uh, George. George Miller. George. So if you have any questions, it's time right now. So it seems that um, George is not uh, asking any questions. No problem with that. Uh, we have Howard. Um, guys, if you want to type like something, like be sure to uh, to go on. Uh, got already like few questions around. Um, look at the pusher strategy. Don't remember what did you know about it and does it work? Ah, yes, Michael. I'm gonna get to you like. Uh, in few few moments about it, uh, Howard. Howard, are you around? No mic, yeah, no problem. Julian, any questions? Any questions? Great, uh, Kevin. Kevin, any questions? Hi, Kevin. Doesn't seem so. It's it seems that um, there's a lot of computer today that doesn't have any mic. <laughs> oh, just joking, guys. If you don't want to talk, it's okay. I totally respect that. Just uh, put your question down. Uh, Lawrence, Lawrence, are you around? Time for it's time for question. So, what daily task and system do you have in place for VAs? Uh, a bit like I've explained to um, to Dimitris uh, just right before. Uh, one thing also I want to add up is Upspot, uh, Upstaff. Sorry about that. Upstaff.com. That's amazing software to monitor people uh, what they're doing. So if you want to be sure that uh, your poverty, your productivity increase. Um, Upstaff will be a great, great thing to add because you will be able like to monitor which side they're going. Um, they're gonna take like screenshots of their work, uh, and also this gonna be help you. This gonna help you as well to um, to calculate the hours that they're working, especially if you're working on a um, hour base instead of a weekly or monthly base. This is gonna be very, very cool. And also they can they can take care of the payroll as well. So I mean, based on the hours they're working, you're gonna send like the money uh, related to that. So this is a very, very monitor, like VA uh, monitoring tool. 
Um, regarding now task and system, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff depending what you're, you're, um, you're going to do. Like right now, I'm going to add someone that's going to do all the product uh, research for me. Uh, basically, I was doing that before on my end, and now I think it's task to it's, it's time to pass to to pass that to someone else. So they are going like uh, basically what they're going to do is they're going to go into AliExpress, mm -hmm. eBay, and a bunch of places, and they're gonna um, they're gonna add up like uh, all that into an Excel sheet from Google Drive, and that they're gonna add the the product depending on the on the specs that I gave them. And from that, after I will just go into it and will choose which one it will need to be added up to the stores, and the the VA will take care as well of that. So everything is going to be um, systemized regarding this. So like that, I'm not losing time uh, on looking or d deep digging into products. They will do all the this job for me. What the only thing that I will need to do, and I will keep keep the end uh, on that, is the um ads facebook ads everything related to that for now uh until probably a certain time uh and then i will pass that again to someone else because um you know when you're playing with your uh, your own money and you want you have someone else playing with your own money it's two different kind of, of things so you need to build also some confidence and you need also to build some relationship with the person that will will work with so um this is part of the game as well um lawrence lily Lily, no, um, no, 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 Mike. Lisa, any question, Lisa? So, uh, no. Uh, Ed, 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 we're back. Okay, I'm here. I feel I'd like to know how you would approach creating a Facebook campaign for a niche. As an example, let's use car enthusiasts who drive to board turbocharged vehicles to sell gouges. How do you initially set a campaign and how do you test the ads to maximize the ROI? This is a great question and there's two answers to that. First of all, you know what? We are going to go into uh, the ad manager and I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm, I don't really know um, this uh, niche at all. So I'm gonna I'm gonna improvise and see what will be my um, I would work to find out uh, this niche. So do you see my screen now? Just to be sure. Um, so one thing I'm gonna do is um, to understand your. Um, let me check that. This is not what I want to do. I want to go here, Google. I want to uh, understand uh, what's the um, car enthusiast who drives turbo turbocharged vehicle. I'm going to type like turbocharged vehicles. So, okay. Are we talking about muscle car or things like that, Ed? Let me know if we're talking about this kind of cars. So like that, I'm gonna be sure that we're on the same uh, or any kind of uh, car. Because one thing that you can do for sure is to start looking for events, you know? So if there's any events related like, um, let's, che let's check like uh, turbocharged vehicle events. Uh, is there anything related to that hot rod? Uh, Utrod sounds to be something interesting. Uh, just want to be sure that we're we're talking about that because uh, I don't want also to lose your time, and I want just to be sure that you're um, you're aiming for that kind of stuff. But one thing that I will will know, like you see right now, what I'm doing is I try to understand what's going on with this kind of um, of of niche. So I will I will start like going just on Google and see if is there anything like related to that. Like we're talking say about like Volkswagen turbocharged sales event. Uh, I will do like some some kind of research uh, around events, event, uh, around the vehicles type. Uh, and also one thing I will add up is probably check in Google Trend just to have an, an idea where we are at right now in terms of uh, trending, you know? So one thing that we found 
And we're going to see it's probably in French. <laughs> uh, I'm going to type auto router right here just to, to, to check that right now. Um, because it's the, the thing that we found. Uh, okay, I'm going to add that there's an event could be Worcester in Las Vegas for European cars like ODS Cat. Okay, uh, you see here the trend is going down right now. So um, we can remember that this was pro particularly very high in the early tw 2000 and now it, get, it got down. Um, there was a film related to that. There was a bunch of stuff. You can see also the, the request related. So this is one thing. Also, uh, you talked about an event. So we're going to check like the event host. Uh, host Las Vegas. She, sorry, ever fest. I mean, the, the ID first is to understand the niche. You know, what's related to that? Uh, is there any kind of events? It is driving people uh, outside their uh, their home, things like that. I mean, especially for this kind of niche, okay? Uh, you're going to check out after what's going on. So, I mean, if the, the, um, the trend is low, that probably means also that you will not have a lot of competition at also because people are going to see like it's it's not trending anymore so it's probably not, not a great place to go right now uh to start uh making ads or things like that or it means that it it had it has already reached a kind of plateau and from there i mean the people that are working in this niche pretty pretty owns it so they master it uh enough to be at the top of it but my feeling right now it's there's a lot of space in this niche uh i don't think anybody owns it right now especially on on facebook uh so i mean there's place for that next one thing that you will you will want to do is to go into audience insights and starting doing some research so one thing that i'm doing as well now uh, i was not doing that before but i found that is very 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 good to do that and you can have also a va of doing to do that is to get an excel sheet and write down all the interests. So let's say we are going broad and we're gonna type other rod cars. Okay. Now you're gonna see like uh it's principally men between 18 and 24. You got like some probably people up to 34, and after that it's just going down 50%, 15% and, and down. I mean, so I mean where you wanna play is between 18 to to 34. Um, some people will remove the 18 to 24 because they think like people don't buy, but I don't agree with that. I have a lot of traction on 18, 24 people that are buying, like, especially in some niche. And I think since this niche is pretty, is pretty hard and it's men, uh, this will be like, this will be into the ad set. That's for sure. Okay. Then after that, when you want to check, like, uh, one thing I'm going to check is purchase. Just to be, uh, no, sorry, um, activity. So I'm going to check here if there's um, the number of ad clicks to be to be sure that this is a high number. Right now, I feel like this number is very, is still low. Everything below 30, I feel like it's it's pretty low. So I would look like probably later for some interest where uh, we can get higher ads clicked on that. Okay. I will, not, I will not go too in deep because we have already made like some videos regarding that, but at least you will have like some kind of IDs. Um, so right now you have a bunch of things that a bunch of interest that I will uh, right away take into uh, your, your stuff. So you have American Love Scars, Classic Nation, everything like above, like let's say 1920. I, I will take that and will try to find interest related to that, okay? And one thing if you want to dig uh, a bit uh, deeper is to type here to see if there's an interest related to that. America loves cars. Doesn't seem classic nation. Seems that there's something related to that. So we're going to move there. But there's not enough audience. Okay, sometimes this kind of things can happen. You're gonna ch you're gonna check like for um for for some kind of audiences, and you will see that there's not a lot of people. So you will need like to do a lot of research. If you find that you cannot go um, deeper with this kind of term, you will need like to probably to search for another term and start again digging and finding like the the interest you know related to that. After <clears throat> next step. 
will be to create to create your ad. So one thing that you want to do is to go into uh, the power editor. Um, I'm going to check if it's going to work. I had some problem today with the power editor. It seems to work great. Um, then you got to create a campaign. One thing that you want to do is um, if you don't have any data right now, you want to test like a product to see how, how people are getting engaged. Uh, there's two ways. First of all, if you have a, pay, a fan page related um, to, your, um, to your niche, uh, I, all, I highly suggest that your fan page is above like 5K before starting to test any product. The reason why is below that you will not get a lot of reach. And I mean, sometimes you will not get, you will not have an, any chance to get um, test sales, like free kind of te test organic sales from that, okay? You, you are not looking exactly for that, but it's even better if you can get, because you're gonna get a sense of what's going on if people are getting engaged, commenting naturally, uh, sharing naturally the post organically and all this kind of stuff without putting a dollars on it, you know? And if you can get like few comments, let's say like let's 10 comments in less than 30 minutes, I mean, there's something going on with this post. Now, if you're not getting that, you wanna force the action and to force the action, you're gonna, you're gonna select pay, po um, paste post, uh, engagement. Okay, you're gonna push that to see. Okay, how many people are are um, are going to get engaged and might be get it into a cell. Okay, uh, <clears throat> later on, when you get enough traction, uh, you might want to create a new campaign aimed to this same ad and get into uh, website to conversions or uh, click to website, but. Uh, rule of thumb, you need to test them all at a certain point because sometime, and you, you will need also to track them properly, you know? So for that, you will need the right Google Analytics tracking, the right Facebook ads tracking, all this kind of stuff to see which one is gonna give you like the best return on investment and as, and as well the, mo the most sales also because sometime you can run post pair engagement, link to click and uh, website to conversion. But at the end, I mean, the page post per engagement can give you like better value at the end. So you will need to test those three. There is no magic into that. The only the only thing that you need to do is test, test, and test. Uh, Ed, I hope I've uh, answered uh, as much as I can in a few minutes. Uh, I'm going to go over other people because... Um, uh, there's no much more minute left. I don't want to do a two hours webinar or four hours webinar. Um, then uh, where we were at? Um, MM, Lisa, Mark, Mark, are you there? Do you have any question? Michael, uh, pusher method, pusher method. Um, the pusher strategy, the, the, the strategy, there's multiple. Like there's there's the force that I've, that, that, that I've already shown to you. The pusher strategy was to change uh, the bidding like uh, something like three times a day. I don't recommend that thing. You, the reason why is sometimes, especially when you're doing that on website to conversions, uh, website to conversion ta can take time to get optimized. So Facebook, it takes... 30 minutes to Facebook to update their algorithm, but after that, they will need probably some back data from a uh, few hours after. So it can take like sometime 24, 72 hours before a website to conversion can start to work well. So each time that you're going to change the, the bidding, uh, you might have some problem. It's why when I do website to conversion, normally I'm gonna start like with, um, let's say 20 to $30 ad set automatic bidding, and I'm gonna let it work, uh, run for probably three days until I start to take actions on it. Even like, I mean, sometimes I can, I can lose on some ad set, but because of the time it takes to understand what's going on and from the Facebook algorithm, uh, it can be a winner like later after. So, I mean, you need to you need to let it work a bit before taking action. And once you, you've done the optimization, you can do uh, you can check the past three days and base your um, your um, daily budget on that. So, I mean, let's say that you're getting a uh, $5 uh, CPA, uh, cost per conversion, and you made like three sales, 
so it's fifteen dollars pan. So what you're you're looking to do is probably to increase this to twenty dollars, let's say after. Uh, so like that, you might have a Ford conversions, and I mean you need to go like slowly but surely to check your uh, your CPA cost and to add up. And if if it, if your CPA cost after is going uh, is more m- much more expensive than it should be and much more expensive than your budget, let's say you're getting like you're, you're doing like. Um, an hundred dollar daily budget ad set and you have one conversion at one hundred dollars you want to cut that or just lower your uh your budget back again let's say to uh 15 or 10 or five dollars just to uh push facebook to go back again and see if uh they can re-optimize that ad okay uh these are a few tricks <clears throat> so i don't really recommend to optimize more than one time a day maximum each ad set okay um next question what sales channel are you using so right now uh i'm using only facebook uh no that's not true i'm using facebook google uh display retargeting and product uh list ads and i'm using also ad roll um getting starting to get good results on um on google uh product listing ads is where i have like the best roi right now uh, and ad roll as well. Um, so you can test those. Uh, I think it's gonna give you like probably another kind of perspective. And you need also to give you a bit of time again on getting the result to be sure that um, you get the right data because again, these these things are always based on data. Evan Kotler, uh, are you ordering for AliExpress still going through a supplier with CSV fine? So right now my model is I caught AliExpress. I have a broker. How oh, did I get this broker? I'm going to get into it right now because this is one of the most, uh, the most popular question right now. So I got this broker back in uh, June, but I really started to work with uh, her in October. Um, got uh, them started like to to get like very few specialized uh, things that I, that I got and I met her on um, AliExpress and it came that I was ordering and ordering and ordering on a daily basis and finally I, I just asked the question you know are you would you like to get all my products for me so I, I just go through you and that's it that was that was that was simple as that so my my uh, my advice would be to find one of these um agent because there are two things on aliexpress there's agent and there's manufacturer so if you're dealing with agent agents normally can have access to exactly the same thing than all the other store that you can see there are all the same manufacturers out there on aliexpress so you will be able like let's say to build a relationship first it's very important to build a relationship first and see uh, and show them how much money you're sending them on on a regular basis then after that you can ask them you know uh would you like to be my broker get uh, all this stuff and yeah that's it P- pretty simple well, i think i got luck also on that so <laughs> so um you need you need to develop a relationship with the, these people uh same thing if you're looking also uh on the u.s market uh you can find also brokers you can just type into google or into uh google you type you can type also wool sellers or thing like that i mean you can develop some kind of um uh, of this type of relationship as well to get all the products that you're looking for. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, Dimitris, I have another question. Is I see many Shopify owners having problems with fraudulent activity who ask chargeback all the time. How do you handle them? So first of all, the <clears throat> most of the chargeback that I'm getting are coming from Indonesia, India, and all this kind of thing. So the first thing that I'm doing is um, I try to uh, block this country. The way of doing that on Shopify is to create a shipping method for, let's say, the specific country, but you don't put anything inside. So when they're gonna go into checkout, they will not be able like to check out completely because we cannot get their uh, shipping method. Okay. Now, how do I handle the the chargeback? Is um, I uh, fight them. Each of them, I fight them. And some I win, some some I lose. Most of the most of the time I win because uh, I have the proof that the item has been delivered. Even like if it has been fraudulent, uh, it's part of the credit card insurance also. So this is how what I'm doing. Um, 
Hi there. Question. Yes, I have a question. Mark, okay. Uh, about I had a question about when you're starting out, when you have no fans starting from scratch, what's the best practice? I know CT, CTW and the target piece, but concern about looking legit. So, I mean, there's two things. If you don't have fans and you're starting a fan page right, right from the scratch and you want to start uh, putting ads right on it right now, um, you will have to test between PPE and CTW. My main guess will be CTW might bring you much more traffic at the same time. Uh, PPE, since you don't have a lot of organic reach already from your page, uh, it might take some time, uh, more time. But also one thing that you will need to take in consideration is to be precise as possible if you're doing that. So like that, you're going you're gonna to target uh, the right real fans. Instead of going super broad, uh, you will need to go to target um, the audiences that are super precise. And probably you should get like good result between PPE and CTW with that kind of uh, strategy. Uh, great. Um, setting up an affiliate program. Uh, I, I don't have any recommendation right now because I haven't tested anything. I've been looking a lot of stuff. The problem with affiliate programs on, uh, your store, it's the margin that you have. Okay. Uh, affiliates won't work for small margin. You need to give them some kind of substance um, behind that. So, I mean, if you're looking to give affiliate commission, uh, let's say a dollar, two dollar, three dollar per sales, five dollar per sale, no affiliates will go. No top affiliates even will go for that. Okay, you will need to give like much more, like something like $30, $50, $100 and more, okay? So if you're thinking about going into an affiliate programs, there's two of doing it. One, you have a lot of margin. Two, you have a recurring program, some kind of, um, let's say, Birch Box, uh, Crate Box, things like that, where uh, the affiliates can get recurring, on a recurring base, uh, their, uh, their money. So that will be probably the two best way of getting an affiliate working. If not, I mean, you, you're going to, to lose a lot of time. And even like going uh, to an affiliate network and proposing your, your store with super low margin, super low returns, they, they won't even accept it. So think about them making a lot of money uh, before you're making you money. So this is another, another way of, of seeing, seeing things uh, when you do affiliate programs. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to take like one last question and then I'm going to close the show for today. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I have like Tudor, Asikit, uh, T.I., Robert, Ned, Mark, whoever wants to um, to do another, uh, I have another question. Let's go. Uh, Sofian, yes, I'm using ClickFunnels. I'm going to tie ClickFunnels uh, into uh, selling a physical product also. I'm going to test that. It's working very good for some people. The only thing that I had uh, that um, didn't brought me faster to, to ClickFunnels for selling things um, online right now was that I don't want to manage inventory or sending like inventory on the CSV file. I wanted that to be fully automated. So now since they have, um, what is that, ShipStation integrated now, uh, this is going to save a lot of time and a lot of problems. Since with ShipStation, I will be able to connect my fulfillment house directly. They will receive the order and I won't need to touch anything. ClickFunnel can be super, super powerful because there is no distraction around that. When you're selling something, you can do a bunch of things, especially also on upsell. They have a great upsell system. So, I mean, you can monetize like crazy. Uh, you can do probably even more, especially when you're launching like specific product. So you can do a super launch on that with an upsell. Then once it's done, I mean, you're gonna redirect like the traffic to Shopify uh, for normal, like let's say normal promotion. But at the at the same time, since you will be let's say connected to your inventory store, uh, I mean everything will be managed. You will not have to move things back to another place and all this kind of stuff. So this is pretty much it. Hope I've answered your question. Um, okay, guys, there's a few other questions. Uh, I'm gonna answer it for you. <laughs> 
then that's it. That's it. I'm not going further today. <laughs> uh, my Shopify sales have sold down a lot. Maybe it is because January, what strategy would you recommend to boost sales, uh, open shop new stores? I mean, um, it has, I mean, for me, it has been like, okay, it has been not the best month ever, but it, it is okay. Um, I mean, some people had a hard start also on, uh, on January. So, I mean, January globally, let's say globally, normally it's not the hot, hot, uh, months, uh, to do sales, but one thing that I would recommend you is to uh, to get new products out, okay? Uh, it's not by opening new store you're going to get things uh, different or getting into uh, other business. It's not really a good strategy if you're not able to get sustainable revenues from your store that you're having now. Before jumping up to another store, be sure that you have stabilized this store and you know that you can make a decent money fr from there, like uh, on a daily basis. Then after that, you can start thinking. You know, each store you can easily uh, have sustainable revenue, good revenues uh, on a daily basis. So I mean, there's a lot of work, uh, but especially what I've said would be like to launch new products, launch new products every single day. You can launch one, at least one. The minimum would, I would say is one, but uh, you can launch between one and five products per day and you will see a big difference uh, going on. And especially like some product, uh, some product, what I see is they're slowing down for a time. And then after that, they're, they're, uh, they're going up. Um, also, another thing is would be to look for evergreen products as well. Okay, here you go. Uh, last question now is, <clears throat> is it better to have several interests in one ad or one interest in one ad in your experience so the way i'm working is when i start a new campaign i'm testing a new product or i don't really know the niche before spreading spreading everything very large i mean spreading having multiple ads with different interests inside i'm gonna create one ad set uh and i'm gonna put like five to ten interests be between those ad set i'm, I'm gonna regroup them uh, let's say I'm going to do all the magazines together. I'm going to do all the um, the websites together that are related to the, this niche. I will, I'm going to do like this type of stuff, you know. Then after that, like if I have a winning one, I would I would split out this winning ad set into multiple different interests to see which one it is working. But even before, what you can do is split out by ages. You know, you can split out by everything related to demographic and then after once you see the winning there you can go and spit out interest so there there's different way of doing it but i found that it is more effective uh doing it this way for myself now other, other people might have other strategies also <clears throat> guys thank you very much um hope uh, you had a great time and you got like some value with that uh, very short QA question, the webinar. We will have uh, other like that, like every month. I want to do at least once a month uh, to answer you live. And this webinar will be recorded and will be added to my YouTube channel as well. So uh, like that, uh, I'm going to share it back. And if there's anything on, you will be able also to comment that or add other questions that I didn't have time to answer uh, to you guys thank you very much have a nice afternoon uh, have a nice night if you're uh, in europe right now and uh seeing you see you like very soon ciao guys